Hello viewers, welcome back to Dexter's Lab 2013. Um, it's a nice day outside, we've just been out for a walk and uh, I've got a nice cold shandy on the go. So I thought I'd take a few minutes out uh, just to run through all of the parts of the SEM teardown uh, that I have saved. Um, the main chassis and the uh, large chunks of metal uh, will be heading off to metal recycling. Uh, but these bits here are mostly bits that I've just um, pulled off and thought I would keep. And also they are requests from people who said, please can you save me X, Y, Z, uh, because I could do with one. And that's what I've done. So some of these bits will be heading off to their new owners pretty soon. Uh, so I thought we'd just you know, run through the bits that I've got and uh, I'll tell you why they've been kept. And I'll make any corrections about what they actually are as well. Right, so let's start the uh, big box here. So this is one of the ion pumps. Um, this is one of the smaller ones. It's manufactured by Anelva, uh, which is a Japanese make, uh, part number 9127125. Um, this, I have removed the magnets that uh, normally surround this uh, because it's getting shipped off. I think this was going to America. Um, so the magnets just been taken off just to make it a lot lighter. So uh, we've got the port on the front here and that is the high voltage electrical connection. So you normally put, I don't know, I think it's around about 5, 6 kV on there. And that, uh, with a bit of science uh, inside, um, ends up uh, absorbing any of uh, the stray gases that are in the system and uh, uh, increases the vacuum. Uh, on the back there, we just got one of the heating baking plates. Uh, that runs off 100 volts and that's 200 watts. So that's part of the, the baking out system. Okay, the next bit is this rather heavy lump of kit. So this was sandwiched in between the one of the baffles uh, from the diffusion pump and the base of the actual sample chamber. And it's basically just a big, a big valve. Uh, it's pneumatically operated by uh, this part here. Uh, there's a micro switch on here just to indicate it's positioned back to the controller, but this can just um, open and close uh, and just completely seal off the uh, pump and uh, baffles from the main chamber. So nice lovely bit of engineering on that. So also in this box we've got a uh, the two panel meters. Let's just turn the brightness down here for you. Um, that were on the front panel. Um, one of the EV blog members has asked for those, so I've saved those. Um, also in here we have, um, this is one of the Pirani gauges. So that's a uh, thermally operated uh, pressure vacuum gauge. And I think there's two of those. So if anybody needs those, let me know, because I just saved those anyway. Uh, we've got a couple of connectors that uh, somebody mentioned that they needed because they're no longer manufactured. So um, there's a, I think there's another one. Yeah. So there's a couple of those. So those will be going off to a new owner. Um, this is uh, one of the pneumatic pistons, which I think this locked the sample table um, into place um, so it was really rigidly mechanically um, locked to the sample chamber itself uh, presumably for doing really really high magnification stuff stops the table in the sample moving around while you're trying to look at it so that's just a pneumatic I think this might actually be seized up uh, this small box here that I've saved and have already opened this was attached to one of the beam monitoring probes the things that uh, was a little prong that actually went inside um, and went in place of the beam. Um, I believe this is just an attenuation module. Uh, so we have the control from the system and this wire would have been the input. If we look here, it's pretty simple. Uh, we've just got a 7.4 series chip there, which is a HD 7406P. I'm not sure what that actually is, but there's three outputs going to three relays. So I think it's a really simple um, system to be able to switch each of these relays in and out. Um, and select one of these attenuation resistors. Um, there's four in total, so there's presumably that one is just connected straight through and then 
this connects in this one and then this one. We have 10 gig ohms. Uh, we then have one gig ohm, 100 meg, and then we've got 10 meg. So yeah, I think this is just a really basic attenuator. And the rest of the items in this box are all adapters that uh, mate up to the sample chamber. Uh, there's a guy um, who has contacted me who has a, an identical machine um, to this one and he needs some spares for his so these will make um, really handy things for him to have. So I've saved off uh, the blanking plates from the sample chamber. Uh, we've got the little light there that's got uh, electrical feed through so those have all been saved. Okay, moving over to this larger box. Uh, we have this unit here. Uh, we'll grab it all out, yeah, there we are. So it's on the front, it just says it's a Quantum Production Limited Automatic Level Controller. Um, the These particular wires here were fed into a large Anelva um, baffle, which was, uh, located just above the main baffle on the diffusion pump and I believe it's filled with liquid nitrogen. Um, these wires were shoved into one of the holes and if you look they're all actually slightly different lengths. So I think this is just acting as a, a really basic level controller for the liquid nitrogen in that baffle. So presumably a little controller that would open a, a valve or a pump or something and pump more liquid nitrogen into that uh, that baffle. Uh, this device here is a mist separator. Nobody's actually claimed this, but I saved it anyway. Um, thought it might be handy to keep. Uh, this bit here is part of the pneumatic system. Um, this was running all of the um, pneumatic actuators and things like that. So uh, I think this actually ran on compressed air so it wasn't vacuum I think I think there was a separate system um, but uh, again the guy who has a identical system has asked me to save those so those will be heading off to him very soon. This uh, valve and pipe arrangement here is part of the um, airlock system which is this here that allowed you to exchange samples in the main chamber without losing the entire vacuum in the sample chamber so it was an airlock arrangement, so this um, worked with uh, this door here to reduce the pressure in in this small chamber so you could exchange the sample. So I saved that anyway uh, because, the again, this guy who has a, another system doesn't have the airlock arrangement, so uh, I've pulled all this out and saved that for him. So it looks like we've just got a basic... Um, a pneumatically operated uh, valve here. Um, looks like that pin moves upwards and you've got a micro switch there for feedback. And there's another solenoid valve just in there. And this pipe here comes from the actual um, exchange chamber. And here we have uh, that airlock arrangement. So we've got uh, the vacuum port on the base. I'm not entirely sure what this pipe is for. So inside there we have a, an airlock arrangement. With a large rubber gasket on there. Obviously this side would have been under the vacuum. So as this door went up and uh, you had atmospheric pressure on the outside, then that would uh, seal shut very very tightly so and this is one of the detector modules um, there's quite clearly a photo multiplier in here these connections on the front here we've got pH HV sorry PM HV and signal out so uh, photo multiplier high voltage so that would be the supply for the uh, to actually run the photo multiplier tube and that would be the signal out and we have a power input as well um, you can see here um, we've got a lovely uh, baffle arrangement, so this can actually be moved in and out on baffles, uh, but still maintain that high vacuum. Uh, we have the window on the end. Uh, now, I believe um, I have been corrected, and this might actually be 
an x-ray spectrometer um, apparently so uh, there we go uh, but we've got a, a window on the end and we have a uh, what looks like a plastic light pipe which runs down onto the inside there's some kind of coating on the front there and it does actually have some damage on it and that was actually that was actually there when uh, as it arrived to us so that had obviously been damaged before we had a hold of it unfortunately there we go and this item here with all the long wires on um, I'm uh, again corrected on this that uh, apparently this is the secondary electron detector um, it's got a flat front and there's a uh, high voltage connection on the front on the top here now it does look like something's been broken off there um, that was like that when we uh, took possession of it unfortunately it did, did look like that uh, this uh, electron microscope had been somewhat abused and maybe left and um, sat in a corner unloved and slowly got damaged um, because there was a few little bits missing not in the right place or slightly damaged there we go uh, so hopefully somebody can make use of this uh, one of the reasons why I gave these things away for free is because I don't really know if these are going to be usable or not so it's best just to give these away and um, if somebody can try making use of the whole thing or maybe even part of it um, at least then somebody can give it a go and see whether it's actually usable um, now the back here does actually remove off there's uh, three grub screws that I've removed out and uh, you can just separate the two I'll just do that now so we'll just pull this apart and we can see inside there we've got a small front window photomultiplier tube so obviously I don't know if that's working uh, chances are it should be unless it's been burned um, but that is a Hamamatsu R268 photomultiplier and you can just see the window down in the base of the tube there and the last thing to see is the diffusion pump um, I have uh, obviously removed this because uh, I'm going to be selling this on eBay and uh, I've also been cleaning it as well because it was in uh, a pretty filthy condition when I took it out the oil was completely black and completely burnt and the Christmas tree inside um, was uh, completely black so uh, it's taken quite a long time to uh, get that to almost cleaned uh, there's still a little bit more to do so this is the main um, inlet to the uh, actual pump the outlet is here and that attaches then to a roughing pump and that's continually sucking out and the way these systems work is really really simple um, inside here we have the Christmas tree which is a couple of baffles um, you've got a outlet there and an outlet just in there uh, and then these two uh, chambers which run up to those in there uh, that's basically all that is it's just a few bits of metal um, and then in the base uh, we have uh, a number of uh, metal rings that this just locates into and then underneath that on the base we have a large heating element and the way these work is the heating element uh, heats the oil up to um, a couple of hundred degrees and under the partial vacuum that you actually start these in the oil um, boils off as a mist and because it's in a partial vacuum it actually accelerates rather um, quickly through um, this arrangement which actually sprays or effectively sprays a mist of the oil coming downwards out of uh, this gap here and this one here uh, blowing downwards into the exhaust port which is just down in the bottom there which then attaches to this part here so it basically uh, the oil and the remaining bits of uh, gas that are in the system um, stick to the oil and they travel down and the whole lot gets blown down or the oil sticks to the particles and they then um, stick to the wall which is then chilled with uh, water that's what these uh, pipes are here for and that makes the oil then condense on the side of the chamber dribble back down into the bottom there where it's recycled 
really really simple design and very very reliable obviously the only thing to break really is the heating element and those are easily replaced anyway um, now attached to this on just on these two spots here's, here were two temperature sensors they were really really simple bimetallic strip um, sensors that just cut um, the power to the actual coils I would imagine there was two one was probably an overheat sensor so it literally um, cut out um, at a very high temperature and then the other one would have been more of a thermostatic control uh, for the heating element just to maintain it at a set temperature so the christmas tree just disassembles pretty easily it just unscrews Oop. Um, so we just got a metal top and then each of the separate bits Oh, i'm losing bits everywhere come apart um, to allow you to clean them um, obviously you can see I have made a start on this and it was in pretty bad condition when I started. Still a bit of work to do though. Um, again here there was a load of uh, the oil had uh, completely carbonised around these parts. Um, there's still a bit in this, in this tube there so I'll have to get that out. So it all comes off in little bits. Okay, I think that's about all we've got uh, to look at. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, hopefully we'll have some interesting teardowns to come up um, in the future. There's not really much in the offing at the moment, as, as it has been for a while. But I'm sure something will turn up uh, sooner or later. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.